Well, joining us now to talk about that and more, uh, Andrew Fazekas. Uh, speaking with us from Montreal, Andrew's known as the night sky guy, and he's also an astronomy expert with National Geographic. Andrew, great to see you again on this Sunday. This is, the, I guess, the first time NASA's handed over this job of delivering supplies to a private company. Tell us more. Well, this is a, a big milestone for NASA. This is sort of what they've lined up for the future. And what we're seeing here, hopefully with this launch uh, later tonight, is uh, the beginning of private rocketeering, private companies taking over what the old retired space shuttle was doing in terms of shuttling uh, uh, astronauts eventually, of course, but for now at least cargo to the International Space Station and bringing old used equipment back. So this launch that we're seeing tonight by uh, SpaceX, the Dragon capsule will be lifting off uh, at 8.35 e uh, p.m. Eastern Time and will rendezvous with the International Space Station over the course of the next following days and will deliver over 2,000 pounds of, of equipment and supplies for the astronauts aboard the space station and will remain there for approximately two weeks before heading back to Earth with used uh, supplies and experiments from the space station. And I take it NASA is doing this because it's a lot cheaper to do it with a private company than it is for it to do it itself. Definitely, and that's what they're hoping for, is that you're going to have at least a handful of private companies that are going to step up to the plate and take over what the space shuttle was doing. The space shuttle cost each launch, by the way, of the space shuttle. We're, we're, we're talking about over, you know, a, a half a billion dollars. So this is going to be a much less expensive, and they're handing it over to private industry. And I think that's, a, that's, that's probably a really good thing for, for NASA. They can concentrate on going and exploring the final frontier and leaving the low Earth orbit stuff to private hands. Well, as we cast our eye over other space headlines this week, let's talk about the Mars rover scooping up its first soil sample. Uh, how significant is this? Yeah, this is really cool stuff. The, the Mars rover Curiosity has traveled almost half a kilometer from its landing site, and it's going to play in the sand. There's a little sandbox that practically, virtual sandbox that it has in front of it, a little sand dune, and uh, it's going to be scooping up samples and putting it into its instruments that are going to be testing those soil samples. This very sandy material, and this is just a test of, of what its capability will be to search for organic compounds, the key ingredients for life. Now, if, if this is just going to be a test, there's going to be more meaningful sampling of the soil of Mars over the course of the next few weeks. And then it's going to trek on towards its main goal, which is 10 kilometers away, is the Mount Sharp, the large mountain at the center of the crater that is the main goal of this, this mission to get to, because we think there's, there might be a lot of organic compounds, the key ingredients for life in the rocks about 10 kilometers away. But this is just a test that we're doing this weekend. We also heard that NASA's SWIFT satellite has found evidence of a previously unknown black hole. Tell us about that. Yes, very surprising results. We've all heard about these mysterious predators in space. Well, astronomers got stunned because they actually found uh, a black holes inside of a star cluster. It's a star cluster called M22. It sits about 24,000 light years away from Earth towards the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. And they found a pair of black holes each about 10 times the mass of the sun, our own sun. And they seem to be very quietly humming, not voraciously eating like most uh, black holes do, eating a lot of the stellar material, star material mm. that falls into it. But this is very interesting. We've never found two black holes, uh, you know, nestled within a cluster of stars. And this may change our understanding of what black holes actually are. Not close enough to be any concern to us, though. <laughs> exactly. This is really science fiction stuff, practically, and this is really neat because astronomers are pushing the boundaries of our understanding of our Milky Way galaxy and how actually they function and all the individual components. The stellar clockwork yeah. of the universe is what we're talking about. We're pushing our own limits of time here. Andrew Fizek is also known as the night sky guy and an astronomer uh, with the National Geographic Organization. Andrew, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.